We're live. I wonder how long we were live. I was looking at another tab. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. This is Bradley with uh, Semantic Mastery. This is the Digital Marketing Q&A Hump Day Hangouts for October 4th, 2017. We're back to our normal schedule, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's glad, good to be home, even though we had a really good time last week uh, in Portland, and we enjoyed that immensely with all the guys except for Marco, unfortunately. We've got Hernan and Marco on with us right now. We've got a couple of guests, too, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just go right on down the line, start with them as I see them. Hernan, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm really, really good. Really excited for what's coming, actually. Uh, we had, as you were saying, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it's always good to see you guys. We get a lot of stuff done. We got a lot of fun. And, you know, I've been, I've been, I'm still in South Florida, by the way, for the next couple of weeks. And I've been doing these, uh, the best of journal dance which is amazing, amazing. So thank you guys for thank you guys for bringing one of these. If you guys haven't haven't got one of these, uh, this is this is this is badass. So yeah, I strongly recommend it. I know what you guys are talking about now when it comes to this using this every day. So thank you guys. Hey, one, bring, one of the most. Bring me one. Yeah, hang on a sec. Bring me one when, when, while I'm in Argentina, man. Uh, I will be good for when we meet. Get All me right, one. I will. Yeah, it is one hands down one of the most effective tools, and it's a very simple tool, but it's so effective for keeping me focused and on point, and uh, keeping my goals right in in focus all day long, and helps me plan my day and everything else, guys. I've been living by that for well, I just started my second one now, so uh, about fourteen weeks. Absolutely love it. So, Marco, how are you, man? I'm good. Getting ready for surgery again. Oh shit. <clears throat> And uh, I, I, I hadn't announced it only to the partners, but I'll be leaving on October 30th and won't be back until December 15th. Uh, I have an, uh, more nerve compressions, more disc compressions, more pain and agony. Dang, that's, that sucks, man. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, dude, Thanks, that sucks. Andy. But yeah, so anyway, I'll try not to miss too many hump day hangouts because I want to I wanna be here for... Uh, one fifty six, man. Absolutely. We'll uh, we'll uh, make sure that we even if we got to come, you know, set you up while you're in traction. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> so, what's up, Angel? Everything's good, man. Glad to be here. How's everyone doing today? Good, man. Glad to have you here. This is Angel Cruz, everybody. He's uh, he's an SEO badass as well, and we brought him on as a guest for us uh, with us today. So we're glad to have you here, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What's going on, everyone? And last but not least, we got Rob, who's one of our mastermind members as well as uh, the, one of the co-creators of RYS Academy Reloaded with Marcos. What's up, Rob? Oh, not much, gentlemen. How are you guys? Very good. Glad to have you, man. For, for, people, that, for people that don't know Rob, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, and then you can keep going. I, I just want to sing your fucking praises because you're, you're a fucking beast, man, that, <laughs> that this guy comes yeah. up with. I mean... I don't have on my boots today, Marco. <laughs> it's, it's, no, no, but, but, no. Seriously, on, on a serious tip, man. The things that this guy does, or, or, or the, the 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 mad stuff that, that that he comes up with in his in his mind, and then we go and look at or, or test, or I mean, you you've seen some of the results. They, they, they're they're so incredible, man. And so that that's coming down the pipeline. I don't know how we'll present that but it, you know, we expect more awesome stuff uh, from rob it's awesome i know he's like a he's like a a savant in his own right because he's i know some of the stuff he shared with me recently uh even some of the press release stuff yesterday i was really just shocked um it's awesome man so we're, we're glad to have you on the team as well so glad, glad to be here fellas uh, I don't know if we have any announcements because once again, Adam is not here and he always drives this ship. So, does anybody have any announcements? I think we're good. Tomorrow we have um, tomorrow we have uh, the the mastermind webinar, mm -hmm. and we have some announcements. There's some really cool changes coming for the mastermind and the entire semantic mastery layout uh, layout. I would say. So yeah, we're excited. Uh, we have a lot of, of good stuff coming up. So I would just leave it at that for now. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, the Mastermind webinar tomorrow. I'm looking at my whiteboard now. We've got, we're going to be announcing the new format, which is going to be quite crazy. Uh, it's going to be very, something that I think is, is going to be amazing. So we're going to be announcing that tomorrow. After, after tomorrow, we'll probably talk more about this next week on the Hump Day Hangout for everybody else. We're going to be announcing 
a couple other things as well that I can't I can't pitch until until we talk about it in the mastermind. So sorry to leave you guys hanging on that. But so Angel, what you got going on, man? I know um, it's been a while since we talked. So yeah, I mean, um, I'm just always research and development mode, always testing different methods of ranking. You know, I do a little bit of lead gen now. I kind of stay away from clients. Uh, work with a ton of agencies, uh, offer like reseller type services. But most recently, uh, I started working on a project management software uh, developed for uh, digital marketers. Uh, I'm not really here to promote that, of course, but you know, it's, it's something I've been working on for the past five months. I'm really proud of it and it's starting to generate some steam. So, uh, you know, just building that up, uh, connecting with other agencies and, you know, just trying to grow a new SaaS business pretty much. Yeah, well, that's why... Uh, you know, that's in part why, why you're on with us today. One, because you're, you're awesome. But number two, <laughs> Thanks. Because, because we, uh, we're going to, we're warming the crowd up to you because, uh, we know that your software that you've been working on is something that our audience would probably, uh, you know, do quite well with. Um, sure. so that's part of the reason why we brought you on. We're not ready to announce it just yet, but we wanted everybody to become familiar with who you are because you are an SEO badass. So that's awesome. We're glad to have you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to jump into questions then, if everybody's cool with that. Yep. Do it. Let's do it. And guys, feel free, all of you, to just jump in at any moment and comment on any of these questions. Feel free to interrupt me. I don't mind. Uh, Wayne, I don't know if you were listening to us last week when we were in Portland. <laughs> Smoking a pancake. <laughs> that is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Bong and a Blintz. Cigar and a Crip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Freaking love that movie. So that's so funny. Last week in Portland, we were, I must have said that 15 times at least, man. It was just stupid. <laughs> in Portland, there's a, it's a very liberal town, so there's a lot of things that are legal there that aren't legal in other areas. <laughs> I wonder what. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a blast. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> man, wish I was there with you guys. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, man. It really was. I enjoyed it. Uh, Mark, or excuse me, Hernan earlier said that we got a lot of stuff done. Well, I, he can speak for himself, but for me, <laughs> but we got a lot of planning done or I got a lot of planning done with the guys, but I can't work, like get any serious work done. Um, when I'm traveling, I just can't do it. I, for, it's just difficult for me to do from a laptop. And so I didn't get much work done other than the planning. Now that's high level stuff though, that needed to be done. So, um, it, it is a lot of work that we completed, but it's not like the typical day to day grind stuff. So we had a lot of fun and it was, uh, you know, just kind of team building environment. And, you know, we worked in the morning for several hours and then pretty much from after lunch on, we would just hang out and have a good time. So it was, it was a lot of fun. All right. Mohammed's up first. He says, hey, guys, what is the best way to improve a drive stack that hasn't ranked yet? Do I build more links to it or just be patient? Before even fin carrying on, I would say be patient. Uh, it depends on how long it's been, Mohammed. But I know drive stacks are often, uh, and I'll obviously let Marco comment on this and Rob both as well, but I know a lot of the times just being patient is all it takes and they'll end up starting to index or starting to rank some of the stuff that you were pointing, you know, as your target URLs. Um, I've, I've experienced that many, many times without having to do anything other than just wait. What do you guys think? I, you know, it, 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 it depends. We did, we've done both and I know Rob has done both also. Rob is the most impatient person in the world. If, if it doesn't move, he just hits it again. He just hits it. And if it moves a little bit, he wants it to move more, so he hits it again. He doesn't care whether it's dancing. He just overpowers stuff. Now, you could do it that way, or you could do what I recommend in, in the RYS Reloaded Black Book, which is you wait out those 21 days. That's a must. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, but it, it, this, is, this is for intelligence purposes, right? You, you, you want intel. You want to gather all the information. What's going to rank the easiest? Well, that, that's what where, where the, where the cherry, if it landed first page, right, towards, uh, maybe towards the bottom of the second page, third page. Anything for a fourth page, right, to, to, to second, those are cherry. Those are just ready to get hammered and, and, and get moved up. But you, you need to know whether, whether that's where they're going to settle, and you won't know until it's cleared the Google dance. Once it clears the dance, then you decide, okay, so am I going to do press releases? Am I going to do link building? Am I going to do... Uh, additional stacks inside the stack. Am I going to do uh, stacks as PB? How, how am I going to treat this? But you can't do that until you know what Google has decided to do with the original stack. 
he says he's in, a, he's, in, he's in a competitive niche. We took on, as you guys know, for RYS Reloaded, a major metropolitan area in one of the most competitive niches, correct, local niches, correct? And it, it just, it, it blew the guy's phone off the wall. He had to, he had to shut the phone down. That's awesome. Because he got, he got so many leads. I'll just I'll let Rob go on from there and give you his opinion, but that that's what I would tell you. And if you read the RYS Reloaded Black Book, you you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. What are your thoughts, Rob? Well, I mean, part of it to me depends on the final goal, right? If if you're trying to, uh, like when Marker said, I'm impatient. I'm not necessarily trying to rank the document or the PowerPoint or the slide or whatever. So I literally just smash those things at times. Um, but the actual, what my final ranking thing is, so if I'm trying to rank the G site, you know, I may be a little more patient on that, um, but not always. But then, you know, it will dance, but over time it will come back. So, yeah. I mean, anytime you hit anything, it's going to dance a little bit. So, yeah, I agree with that. Definitely. Uh, I'll jump in, guys, real quick. So sure. you, usually when I uh, do a drive stack, I like to uh, submit it to Google right away. So I'm a little impatient myself. And I'll let it settle for a few weeks, see what Google decides where to rank it. And once it stabilizes, um, you know, I like to see it, you know, hit like page four or three, like Marco said. I'll start uh, building links uh, such as Behance. And uh, that's actually one of my favorite links to start uh, sending to Google drive stacks. Um, I actually have a really cool example. If you type in, I'll give this away because it's it's a really old stack. Um, if you type in used forklifts, New Mexico. So I ranked that uh, position one, uh, only sending one Behance link that was boosted up. So I kind of did a tiered method there. Um, but that's all it took pretty much. Um, you know, once it indexed, it probably landed on page four or five. And then uh, I sent a... Nice. Um, what's it called? The Behance link directly to that and then boosted the Behance with some links. And that's all it took. Just one Behance link, right? One Behance link. And then you just spam the shit out of that? I mean, I don't think I spammed the crap out of it. I might have sent a, f a few uh, decent links to that Behance, but that's about it. I ain't go too crazy. Huh. I'll be damned. That's all it took, though, you know, just to give you guys an idea of, of sometimes it doesn't take that much. It could just yeah. be one or two links and it'll do enough damage. Very nice, man. Don't you guys love it? I just love these, man. It's so simple. <laughs> like, it's just, it's stupid easy. It's like, it's like your cheat ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid easy. All right. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Jason says, I'm interested. Oh, I'm sorry, Muhammad. I forgot the other side of your question. Uh, yeah, I did actually expand. Well, at least I think I, I don't, I don't have that. The membership site pulled open, um, Muhammad, uh, for the syndication Academy, but I, the, uh, I didn't, I'm not sure if I expanded on it in Syndication Academy. I know I covered it a little bit more in detail, but uh, I'm not giving away the method um, entirely uh, inside the mastermind I have, but I can't share that outside of the mastermind, um, at least not yet. So I'm not sure. I, I, I swear beyond July, I've talked about it more uh, in the Syndication Academy webinar, but I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head and I don't have that site open, so I can't confirm it. So if you want to follow up with me, um, just tag me in the Facebook group, the Syndication Academy Facebook group, and then I'll, it'll remind me to go check on it after the webinar is over, um, and I'll get back to you within the next 24 hours and let you know which module it's in. But it, if, it, if I did cover it more, which I think I did, it would have been beyond the July webinar, right? So check August or September. Um, I know I didn't cover it in September, so check the August one, all right? And that was, remember, the August one, guys, is the one that I didn't post until like the day before the uh, September webinar. <laughs> so maybe it's in that one. If you go back and check that one, just tell, let me know. If it's not there, then um, you know I might be able to expand on it slightly, but I can't, I can't give away all the information on that method because that's reserved for mastermind guys, period. So that is what it is. Jason says, I'm interested in starting a few lead gen sites. I'm just doing keyword research right now, but wondering how to decide what business or contractor I'll give the leads to when I start getting them. Do you guys have a process for determining one business or contractor? Do you give several of them a taste in hopes that you'll get a buyer? Is it best to give the leads, leads away for a few months and then shut it off and contact them to see if they'd like to continue? All right, I've tried multiple ways, Jason, and I'm glad Angel's on because Angel does a lot of lead gen too. I'd like to get his opinion. 
But over the course of my career, um, I've done it multiple ways. And what I found to be the easiest is to set up a prospecting funnel. For me, that's always been the easiest, which is to set up like a landing page with a, a video. It can be like a VSL type video, a video sales letter, which is basically just a PowerPoint slide with text on it, right? And, um, and, and then I narrate it. Uh, and I just state the benefits or what I've got. I show examples in the video and I make it a, as short a video as possible. Usually it ends up running between three to five minutes where I just explain, hey, look, I've got these leads. I, and I show in the video like the Google search results with my property being ranked. And then I show maybe the call volume coming in or, or uh, you know, maybe emails if they for, filled out the contact form submit um, or contact request form, excuse me, like the leads that actually submitted. So usually after I have the results, I can show those results in a video for that specific city or town. And then all I'll do is just do an, a cold email campaign to all the contractors uh, in that specific industry in that specific city. And then I make sure that they're all the way, like I don't even blind carbon copy. Uh, like I do like a straight up, everybody sees their competitors' emails uh, in the actual email that I send out to those contractors so that they know it's being sent out and it says it right in the damn email like this is being sent out the first person or and a lot of times I've done it both ways where I've said the first person that replies and uh, sometimes you get some good responses from that but other the more recently the way that I've done it is actually setting up on the landing page just a Google form that they have to fill out with just some very basic info um, that ask them, you know, like, to, so, so that I, and I tell them that they're going to go through a, a, a slight screening process or whatever. And the reason why I do that is because I don't like to just give the leads to just the first contractor. I need to vet them because if it's going to be my web property, my digital asset that's producing the leads, I don't want some, you know, jackass contractor out there servicing the leads and, and then screwing it up and getting negative reviews put on my uh, digital asset, if that makes sense. So I've learned over the years to, um, you know, to, to put some sort of screening procedure in place. And that usually just typically has, if just having somebody fill out a web form, don't make it too complicated because otherwise you'll lose a lot of leads from that uh, as far as like, you know, potential service providers. But you do want them to take that extra little step because that'll eliminate some tire kickers right off the bat because they'll be like, they'll look at the form and say, I'm not filling that out and they'll just move on. Okay, so be it. You weren't interested enough anyways, they would have been a shitty service provider, right? So, but by just doing something small like that, and then you can actually, by then it's not a cold call. Then you, you return the calls of people that have expressed an interest and it's a much different type of conversation because the whole psychology changes when they've raised their hand and said, yes, I'm interested. Then you just pitching them cold, if that makes sense. And so I found that to be a much easier way. And that's only because I, I personally hate cold calling guys. And when I first got my start in lead gen business, that's what, how I did it. I would just start picking up the phone and calling contractors and telling them what I had. But uh, you get a lot of rejection and that'll, man, that'll crush your ego fast. <laughs> like, unless you've got like, um, you know, a heart of steel, which I, I, I don't apparently because I don't like getting rejected over and over again on the phone. So I just don't like cold calling. And I try to do as many warm up processes with the, with a potential, a prospect. I try to warm them up as much as possible before I ever get on the phone with them. So that's worked really well for me. I know it may sound complicated, but it's really not as far as setting up a, a prospecting funnel. It's, it's rather simple to do because it's just a, when I say a funnel, it seriously is just a landing page with a video and a Google form. It can be done on WordPress, right? And you just send people directly to that page from your email, okay? And if you've ever taken our video email course, our video uh, email prospecting course, that's also a great way to do it. And in that course, I, it, it, that's inside a service space, by the way. Um, I can't remember if you got to purchase it or if it's free. Uh, it's also on our bonus site, um, the Mastery and PR and Semantic Mastery bonus site. If you don't have access to that, Jason, but you've bought any of our products in the past, just contact us at support at semanticmastery.com and we'll get you access to the bonus site. And there's a video email prospecting course in there that discusses both ways. There's a laser approach, which is targeting individual you know, prospects uh, with a video email. I don't recommend doing that because it's very time consuming. It's it's super effective, but it's very time consuming. So what I like to do is create more of a general um, email, the, or excuse me, um, prospecting email, uh, video email, uh, sorry, a, a more general prospecting video email that then I mass send out to all of the contractors in that city. And again, I don't blind carbon copy or anything. I make sure that they see that it, that same email went to, you know, 14 or 15 other, whatever, however many other contractors. 
so that um, it, it creates that level, of that, that sense of urgency on their part to reply. So what do you think, Angel? I think that's an interesting approach. Um, I actually take a slightly different approach because um, my background, like before I did any internet marketing, I was actually a door-to-door -door salesman. So I'm used to getting a bunch of notes. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm sure you guys know Mike Pierce. Uh, we've done a ton of work together, but um, I was the guy who was hitting up the phones straight up, uh, you know, hitting up companies and trying to get them to purchase leads from us. So the way I did the research was I looked at the reputation online. So like, let's say uh, we're looking for uh, roof repair contractors in the Dallas area. So I'm going to look at the rep online. I'm going to look at their reviews, just overall generic, um, you know, yellow pages, BBB, just all their ratings overall. And if they seem like a good company, good prospect, then I'm going to pick up the call and uh, just dial them in. There you go. And what I'm going to tell them is um, I have a current uh, provider who has excess leads and we're looking to, you know, bring on another provider who can take these phone calls. Are you interested? So I make it seem to them that, you know, that we're generating a ton of leads, which we are. And we have extra excess leads if they're interested in taking those calls on. So a lot of, a lot of times, um, you know, you might get those people that say, no, they're not interested or the price is out of whack. They don't want to pay $30 a lead or whatever the case is, but you're still going to get a handful of people that are interested. And this is where we give them a test trial where we might send them a few leads in, in a, you know, in a few day span and just see how they, um, they convert on those leads. You know, if it's a good quality lead to them, they're going to want to stay on board with you. Yep. So, um, you know, to answer um, Jason's question, I would definitely look on uh, just taking on more than one contractor or one service provider. Just, to, uh, you know, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You want to, you know, uh, calculate your risk pretty much. Yeah. So the more the better. If you have five, you're good because out of those five, you're going to have one solid provider who you'll have a long term relationship with. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I like your approach, um, picking up the phone and calling, because that is certainly the quickest way to get results. There's no doubt. But I just, I can't stand that call. Like, I just get all nervous and my butterflies in my stomach and shit. Yeah, and I hear you, man. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been through it so many times. I just realized I don't want to do that anymore. So I, I prefer to do like the funnel type method. And what's interesting about that is, is if, if, if it's, if you do a good job on the prospecting side, then you end up with several contractors that have filled out that Google form and you end up interviewing several of them. So you end up with multiple providers, potential providers anyway, so that if you end up like personally, I usually just select one and I give them a chance if they right. screw up or they don't convert well, the, the leads into sales or they, you know, whatever the case may be, they just end up not being a good fit. Then I'll just, you know, cancel them and move on to the next contractor. Um, but obviously, my preferred method, and I mentioned this before, is once I get find a good service provider and I've built a you know rapport with them and they have a history of performing well and we work well together, then I like to always try to shift over to a revenue gen share model because that's where like the bulk of the money comes from from my lead gen businesses is from revenue share, not from actual pay per lead type stuff. Um, and I really like that, but that does take a much higher level of trust, but, uh, a much much higher. Um, or more trusting relationship, I should say, with your service provider. So that takes some time to get to that level. But anybody Absolutely. else want to comment on that before I move on? I, right. I've got a slightly different approach. Okay. It's kind of between the two. So I don't know if anybody's heard of like Ring Partner or any of those call yeah. buyers. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'll get in with them and rank my site at, when I'm first starting and send just the first few calls to them. And then after I've built up maybe a month or two of calls, I'll, I'll literally just take a screenshot of the number of calls I've got over the last couple of months, put that in the email to several providers. And once you have the calls, it's pretty much, do you want to buy these? Yes or no? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, you, and it, it takes a little bit of the, you know, getting a contractor and then having to worry about getting the number of calls, I kind of build up an asset where it's already generating calls, send it to like a cheap ring partner and then transition into the sales side once I have a month or two of calls. And then you can even, if you're doing the whisper record, you can send them a couple of the recording. Yep. Makes it much easier to sell. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's essentially what I do with the little fun prospecting funnel, the landing page and the video, because I'll show them like the call fire, um, dashboard with a, you know, with, with a screenshot of the, the, the volume of calls that have come in and the duration so that they see their valid calls, that kind of stuff. And then typically yeah. I always send all my calls through a call center anyways. 
So I will even set up a um, you know a sub account in Answer Connect, which is the call center that I use for all my lead gen stuff, and I'll set that up so they'll actually take valid leads. Um, and and I like your approach, uh, Rob. I haven't done that to be honest with you. I've I've literally done this many you know dozens of times over the last several years where I'll just generate the leads, and sometimes the leads just like they just you know they go cold because they don't have a, somebody as a service provider. But I'm not. I don't care for the first month or two because all I'm trying to do is just show that call volume coming in. And then, uh, but yeah, I like your uh, your approach. That's something I ought to ought to ought to do because then you're monetizing even those first you know dozen or so leads or whatever they are that's coming through. So that's a good. Yeah, good I mean the the monetizations. Yeah, I mean we because you get a lot of hangups because they go through all these voice recordings and right. put your zip code in all this stuff. But at least the lead, if they go through the steps, they're going to get to the provider they were looking for. That's right. Or at least, at least the service, right? Yeah. And then the other thing is I've noticed whenever I, you know, start a new lead gen site, I tend to get a bunch of SEO companies calling my phone number. So then they, they end up all, by a month or two, they're done calling. So those don't get sent to the provider. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I use a call center exactly for that reason, by the way because it prevents all those spam calls from ever getting to the contractor. So, Hey, Rob, I also do that quite a bit with um, sending calls to like Ring Partner or Palo. Do you ever experience um, the companies just hanging up and uh, dialing back those, those leads that you're sending in? Like they're just cheating yeah. you out of the money? Yes, I've, I've had that happen. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll call my own number to see what's going on, and I've even called them back and called them out on it. Wow. And a lot of times, Ring Partner and them don't even know what's going on. It's another provider that's basically tagging the number and then calling them back or hitting them with a text yeah. autoresponder and all that kind of stuff. Of course, here's the other way to work around that angel. If you get called back by the provider, then you just sell him the leads you're getting ready to sell the ring That's partner right. at a little, at a markup. Yeah, exactly. Cause you're going direct at that point, you know, right. those are the people that are buying the leads. Exactly. I, I, yeah. One guy called me. I said, so you're looking for this lead. You just <laughs> happened to call me back and I was sending the lead to you. Let's yeah. cut out this middle guy and I'll charge you a little more than what, they were paying me and right. less than what you were paying them. So yeah, I've yeah, played it that way too. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jay's up. He says, follow up from my maps listing sandbox issue last week, sharing what I've learned. I've asked, <clears throat> excuse me. I asked last week about why a maps listing would drop from map SERPs just from changing the GMB's area coverage from mile radius to zip codes. Google support said not to worry. It would come back in a couple of weeks after the algo does its thing. I speculate another factor is that the listings area coverage overlapped with other locations in the same GMB account, indicated by two other locations dropping out of the listings altogether as well when the main site's coverage area changed to zip codes. <clears throat> as Hernan mentioned, there was an algo update dubbed Hawk recently that supposedly addressed multi-locations very near each other. Maybe this has some inputs to the outputs, yet I'm still worried. All that to ask is Google GMB. Uh, tech support call service to be trusted. Do they really know their stuff or are they simply typing in the FAQ and repeating talking points? What is your experience with GMB tech support call service? Okay. I don't know the answer to that, whether they can be trusted or not. However, that because I certainly, you know, I don't work for Google and uh, they often are very misleading with their, their information. Uh, I, I know that from being in AdWords and, you know, dealing with customer service and AdWords all the time. You have to because you get ads suspended all the time and shit like that. It's just, it's just part of the process. But with G GMB support, um, I've actually only used it in two different, well, three different instances. And uh, that's fixing a maps issue when there's like something that won't edit for whatever reason. And um, I've actually had been successful with that on multiple occasions. I've also had, um, tech support issue. There's one I'm currently working on right Well, I'm not really working on it anymore because I think it's been resolved in that. And this is a, there's actually a thread in our mastermind right now. Um, I've got a client that I just took on recently that has had their address displayed in a very incorrect format. Right. And so when I got access to the GMB dashboard, he's, it's a new, newer client. I went in and I looked and the address was submitted to the dashboard. Right. So it was entered when they created the listing in this, really incorrect format. And how do you know when an address, which, which way the format is correct or not? Well, let me just show you that and then I'll finish my, my point. You go to usps.com and you go to uh, mail and ship, look up a zip code and you enter in the company name and the street address as it's shown on the Google My Business listing and then you, you know, put in the details and click find. It's going to show you the correct way to format that address on the next screen. 
And that's the way I always enter all of my GMB business addresses because that's the correct formatting. But what's interesting is in this, this client that I'm talking about, they had their address, um, it was really screwed up. It was nowhere near what the correct formatting should be. And so I went into the dashboard and I changed it. Luckily, it was a new site, uh, so there was only a handful of citations. I mean, literally like a dozen citations and that was it. And so I figured, okay, that's, that's manageable. I'm gonna go in and change this address in the Google My Business dashboard. And they had two locations, by the way. Both of them were, they were in different cities, but both of them were formatted incorrectly. So I updated both of the addresses on the dashboard, the, the back end, right? So inside the Google My Business dashboard. And the one city listing, it updated in the, 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 the excuse me, the display address, which Google displays in the actual SERP listing, updated just like that. But the other one, it didn't update. And so, and, and every time I would go back in, and this was over the period of about three or four weeks, I kept going back into the Google My Business dashboard to check. And every time I would check the posted address, so the one that was submitted was correct in the correct format, the one that I changed, but the display address would never update. And uh, so I eventually reached out to Google My Business Support, the help center, and I asked them, why won't this update? And they, and they the, the tech over there said, because in some cases, the, the normal display address is not the actual correct formatting based upon the other businesses in that area. They try to match the display address to match the other businesses in the area, even if it's correct, uh, formatted incorrectly. And so the tech told me, don't worry about it, continue building citations, because that's exactly what I told him. I said, look, I know that if I build citations with the address in the wrong format, that it could end up, you know, or not matching what the Google, show, what the Google dashboard shows. Um, it could cause NAP issues and cause rank, maps ranking issues. And he said, no, we understand the correct address has been submitted. So you should build citations with the correct proper formatting address. And even though our display might not be the same. Now, I, I literally thought he was full of shit because <laughs> I was like, no way I'm doing that. This is completely backwards from all the uh, you know stuff I've done over all these years. But we went ahead and proceeded anyways. Um, I didn't change the 12 citations that he already currently had. And... Uh, and so my point was, um, the, I, within I did a few press releases or whatever, and the the site ranks now, and it ranks in the three pack for like seventy five percent of the target keywords, and it's only been three months, maybe maybe four months, and that's it. So my point is, I don't know if you can trust them or not, but the experience I've had with like something about the NAP issue, um, what they told me seems to be valid because I'm I'm getting results even though the citations don't match what is shown on the actual display address, if that makes sense. Does anybody else have any other experience with GMB? Yeah. I mean, not only with GMB, but just with, with Google overall. Um, here's the thing. Their expert on schema couldn't answer schema questions. Their experts in AdWords often, and you know this, yeah. can't answer AdWords questions, or they are very misleading in what they tell you, as they mentioned, they're expert for in app scripts. If, if you reach out to them, these are engineers, right? That are trying to do uh, customer service. It's like me trying to do customer service. You know how I do oh, that, God. right? <laughs> <laughs> so if, that that's how I see it. So sometimes you'll 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 get lucky, and you'll get someone that has actually taken the time to to, to figure out. What works? What what does it? How how things should be? And and you got lucky. And they told you the right way. More often than not, it 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 doesn't work that way. Now, having said that, maps. Anytime you make changes, they drop. They dance. It, it's it, it, it's it's a big change. And then they come back. What you could do is, as as Bradley mentioned, you could uh, do some uh, press releases. You could do some co citations. Or you could do some. Uh, RYSR stacks to help it along to, 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 to get it back up. There's a, there's a bunch of things that you could do, but normally it'll, it'll come back to, to just around where it was. It might need a little kick in the can. But I mean, it, it, it seems right. The answer seems right to me according to, to, to what I know about the, the, the map salvo. Mm -hmm. Someone might have a different take on it, but is it reliable? No, of course not. Because <laughs> it's the type of people that you're dealing with. Yeah. Anybody else? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, I would take whatever they say with a grain of salt, obviously. But um, to answer Jay's question, if you give it a few weeks, because, you know, w w anytime you make any change, you want to wait a few weeks anyway. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't recover, what I would do personally is just, you know, change it to what it was before. And it that's should pop back to what it, was, it previously was ranking. So that's what I would do. That's exactly what I said last week, too, was wait, yeah. give, let it go past the <laughs> dance period the probation period or whatever, and then uh, let it see, see where it settles back in. And if it doesn't switch it back, that's just, right. just one more, one more comment on that very quickly, guys. I'll let you finish up whoever it was. Um, I, I've got, you know, it's lead gen sites for some contractors that have multiple locations as well. And they, had, there's overlap in there. And I, I didn't, at least my sites didn't get hit by any Hawk update. So I'm not sure why that is, but I know I've got multiple locations for some of my contractors that are literally just like, you know, there's a ton of overlap between them and I, and all those sites are still producing leads like crazy. So I don't, I'm not sure about that, but go ahead. What was somebody else going to say? Uh, yeah, that's all I had though on that okay. point. Just um, change it back. If you don't see anything in the next few weeks. Yep. I think the guy, the guy from the honeymoon just joined too. From the honeymoon, the honeymoon is muted. Hey. hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> What's up, Adam? What's up, buddy? I finally got some uh, 4G connection here. I'm going through Newport, Oregon. If anybody likes uh, Rogue Brewery, I'm passing that right now. But nice. uh, just wanted to pop in and say hi to everybody. And I'm missing the hump day hangouts, but I uh, thought I'd get like two minutes here and listen in on you guys. Nice. So how are we doing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> good to see Angel on here. It's been a few months, I guess. Angel, last time I saw you was down in Dallas. Yeah, we hanged out a little bit. That was cool, man. Yeah, yeah right we got to do it again soon sometime, Adam. Sounds good. I'll let you guys get back to it. I'm uh, crossing the bridge here, and I'll catch up with everybody later. All right, yeah, man, get off a damn hangout and drive the car. Drive Thanks, safe, brother. Man. <laughs> later, I'm man. I'm my cameraman here. See ya. Bye. Nothing like being uh, distracted driving. Like, explain that one to the cops. <laughs> <laughs> but I was hosting a hangout, officer. All right. Paul says, hi, guys. Question is, can you put multiple category types in your schema markup? I've never done it. Um, I don't know if you can or should. I just know I've never done it. Anybody have an answer for that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I usually stack schema. So I'll have uh, at person with all the persona uh, profiles, at business with all the business profiles, uh, local business with your NAP. Uh, so I add a bunch of stuff. You know, there's government associations you can make where it makes sense. So it just all depends what you're doing, but I always have a ton of categories inside of my markup. Well, let me rephrase what I mentioned, what I meant, because okay. what I mean is the at type for, for business, like the, the business category itself. You put multiple cate business categories in there? Oh, no, just one. Yeah, that's what yeah, I've always said. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else or not? I'm going to keep moving, but I want to pull something up real fast if I can find it. Stand by, guys. I'm looking for something here. As soon as I find it, I'll share it. Shit, you know, I always have trouble I can, here. I can tell you that, that Rob stacks schema to, to death. I mean, <laughs> I'm just – you have to see some of the schema crap that he does. Yo, Rob, let's get together, man. I, I want to show you some stuff uh, that I've done with schema. Yeah, I've stacked I'm, I'm sure it's along the same lines as you. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to stack it, and I've even uh, – I call it silo schema. I don't even know if that's such a thing, but it, it's effectively trying to schema the same way you silo. So, right. It's a wormhole that you can never get out of if you start right. really getting into it. Oh man, I was stuck in that wormhole for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I understand. Um, yeah. I, I mean, here's the Google sheet, guys. I just dropped the link on there. This is um, <clears throat> the the business types. So this is, and this is updated in real time as far as I know. Um, so this is the one I always refer to. And when it comes to a business type, I always just select one business type. Now, again, I haven't tested it any other way, but I've always just selected one. So um, also Ryan Rodden is a schema savant. So it might be something that he can cover at some point as well. Okay, I'm going to keep moving, guys. Robin says, good day, hump day hangouts. Must be a, an Aussie. I have a client that wants to monetize 26 videos each of 30 minutes with three 10 minute segments in each show. Okay, 26 videos each 
30 minutes with three 10 minute segments in each show from a community TV channel. Originally, I broke the videos down into smaller videos and we optimized and sold YouTube videos to people interviewed on the show. Okay, I get on page one and I use, or I, I get on page one and use use on their websites, okay? I have tried ranking the videos as playlists and that works, position one to three on YouTube and position three to seven on Google. Haven't managed to find anyone interested to rent them out to yet. Looking for ideas on how to make money from these video assets. Any way to get a playlist URL to show in Google with an image? Uh, the first question, that's the one that's gonna, I'm gonna have trouble on here because I'm not sure I understand what the videos are about. So if I don't know what the videos are about, I'm not sure how to tell you how to monetize them. Um, I had trouble reading that question, so that's probably it's probably my fault. Let me see. Originally, I broke the videos down. Yeah. See, I don't. I. I can't. I. I'm sorry, I, Robin. I can't answer your first question just because I, I have no idea what the videos are about, so I can't tell you how to monetize them. Um, you. You say that you got. You haven't managed to find anyone interested to rent them out, so I'm assuming they're like lead gen videos. Uh, like videos that describe a potential product or service and you were looking for people that provide that product or service to possibly rent them. That's the only assumption I can make. But since I don't really have the full details, I don't want to uh, speculate because I could be very misleading. Does anybody else have a take on that? Okay. Anyway, part number two, any way to get a playlist you are to show in Google with an image? I've never seen that. Um, Me neither. I don't know if that's, has, have you guys ever seen that? Not a playlist. Yeah. I've seen a vid, like a one video, but not a playlist. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen that either. Um, so I, yeah, this individual video URLs will show the thumbnail, but I've never seen a playlist th show a, a video thumb in the SERPs, unfortunately. If she could link us to one, then that'll be interesting. We could check that out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if, if we had a little bit more details on that, Robin, I might be able to answer your first question. I apologize, I can't. I just don't understand what type of video content it is, and that's going to make it difficult to answer, so... All right, next question. I have a client in a social assistance niche. The first five to seven places are usually state or national government websites, followed by big institutions for the main keyword. The client is in position 15 for the main keyword, no local identifier. I built a tier one network linking from YouTube. This is two months old, not many video links from this yet. Also a new ROI stack for the main keyword, no local modifier. She used to rank locally at position one to three, but this has fallen recently to position eight to 10. Majestic metrics, what can I do to get the client's local rank back up for the main keyword? Client still ranks well for local secondary keywords. Um, well, it depends. Like we just mentioned, if you were doing a bunch of this work, like over a short period of time, it could just be that the it dropped in uh, the maps results because of the work that you're doing. That happens from time to time. So it, I don't know what the time span was or how long it's been since you've done that work. It sound, sounds like, since you did an RYS stack, I can only assume it's a newer stack. But um, yeah, I mean, for right now, besides RYS and in doing just the traditional stuff that we've been teaching, which is like content marketing to the syndication network, make sure that it's connected to the Google Plus page. Even though I know Google Plus has almost virtually been removed from everything, guys, there is still a connection on the back end to the maps. So, uh, you know, that's still effective. But my secret weapon recently besides RYS has been press releases and I would recommend distributing a couple press, you know, publishing a few press releases uh, for that company. And what I found to be the most effective or one of the easiest ways, you may already have plenty of content <coughs> ideas for it, but <clears throat> what I found is to um, highlight a review. Like if they've got any good customer or client testimonials that have been posted recently, uh, they don't even have to be posted recently, but um, those I, I, I tend to try to find newer reviews that have been posted and then use that as an excuse to publish a press release saying, Hey, you know, this company got another received a five star review or uh, rave review, rave customer review or whatever, something like that. And, and that's all I do for press release content guys is I just highlight a review in the press release and, um, and I publish, you know, multiple press releases and it within a matter of days, uh, a lot of times the maps will jump, it'll jump right back into the three pack just from the press releases alone. So, wow. My question would be, if she's going for a, a keyword plus local modifier, why is she only targeting the main, the, the broad keyword in the RYS stack without the local modifier? I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but I think what she was saying was she used to rank without the modifier in the maps pack and now she's not. I think that's, at least that's my understanding of the question, so. Yeah, but I mean, if, if, if you're going local, 
you know that that well first of all it, it it's all about power right it's all about how much power you push through whatever it is that you're doing but if if, if you're trying to hyper target to, to hyper geolocate where we teach in inside and she, i know that for for a fact that she's in rys reloaded uh, we teach how to do the images we teach how to do the maps we teach how to do keyword plus local and and uh but a url plus local brand plus local all it, it, you know ev everything that, that you can to associate that set of keywords to the brand to the url and to everything else that's involved with that entity so that that so that google it, 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 i mean you knock them over the head and you hit them so much and so hard with all of that local relevancy that 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 all they'll do is oh okay there you go and, and you know it's it's like making them give up pushing through all all of all of those filters that they have powering through all of those filters right that that's all that she needs to do so why why eliminate the local modifier when you can push through with a local modifier yeah i agree with that i always target local modifiers guys i mean because it's pretty much 90 percent of what i do is local stuff and so i just i always add the local modifiers because it'll rank if with people on mobile devices that might not punch in the local modifier or if they're even if you know that desktop laptop if they have a local ip it will still return whether uh at least for the most part it's not 100 percent accurate but i i know for a lot of my like tree service sites for example if you do a and here's one way to check it robin you can go into um uh google adwords um and use their tool the what is the oh shit the uh, ad preview and diagnostic tool and you can set the local the location for your google search so you can set it by city and then you can do that and um it, now you have to be ranked on page one for you to see it but because it, it, it will show you the the search engine results none of the links will be clickable or anything because it's just an ad preview thing it's really for ads but you can still see what or what's ranking organically and also what's in maps on the first page and you can play around with different search queries with a localized search IP, if that makes sense, right through Google's dashboard. And I've been able to been able to identify some. Somebody's got a mute. I hear a lot of background noise, guys. All right, thanks, man. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I do that. Like, I've I've got a lot of uh, you know lead gen sites or whatever, and the keyword reporting tools. A lot of the times, will show that the site's just not ranking. Yet we're getting calls. Right, and I know because everything goes through uh, Answer Connect, my the, the phone service. So I always get notifications of the leads that come through. And so when I look at a, um, you know, the automated re ranking reports that come out, like Pro Rank Tracker, or I use Bright Local for a lot of my local stuff, um, and they show that like you know not ranking in the Maps Pack or and things like that. And yet I'm getting a bunch of calls. I'll go investigate, and I'll use the Google Keyword uh, ad the excuse me Google AdWords Ad Preview and Diagnostic tool. And then I'll go check it from a localized IP or local search query. And it's interesting because it'll show up. And so I don't know why some of the keyword tools won't, uh, maybe because they're not localized IPs. I'm just saying that's something you might want to check. Okay. And what, I'm, what, I, what I was getting at with that is I always target the local uh, modifier in the keywords. I always optimize with the modifier. And yet when I do just a broad keyword search term instead of um, with the local modifier. So what I'm saying is when I do a broad keyword search query without the modifier uh, and I check it a lot of the times not all the time but a lot of the times it's still it's still ranking okay does that make sense anybody else want to comment on that before I move on it made sense to me so okay uh, bake our bacon what's up buddy uh, he says what are your thoughts on hosting sites on AWS I do it for HTML sites all the time um, personally like when I set up HTML like single pages that I use for spam purposes and things like that I, I just host them right on AWS uh, S3. Um, anything that requires a database is going to, uh, you know, you have to get into using what they call it, EC Cloud, uh, EC2, Elastic Cloud, that kind of stuff, and set up like a VPS, virtual servers, and that kind of stuff. That's kind of a geeky. Um, I know it works. I just, Marco, you want to talk about that? Because I know you've set some no, up we, recently. We, yeah, we do it all the time. W uh, WordPress uh, for tools, for just whatever we need to do. I mean, I, and you really can't beat the speed. Yeah, that that they give you, and the price is, is decent. Uh, you have to be careful for, uh, with bot traffic. Like you have to know what you're doing and and block the bots uh, because that'll kill you. I mean, the, it, band, yeah, the bandwidth. Yeah. yeah, the price will really go up when those bots uh, hit you. 
So you have to make sure that you block the bots before you go live. But once that's done, yeah, you just let Google in. Google, if, if, if that's your target, Google, Bing, Yahoo, or whoever, you know, YouTube, whoever your, your target is, and, and you let them in and you, and you exclude everyone else. Yeah. AWS is phenomenal. Uh, I love that hosting provider. And for the spam purposes, using the S3, like uh, Brad was saying, it just, you can't beat that, you know? Yeah. It's either using AWS or Google Cloud. They both work great for that type yep. of stuff. Yeah, guys, you piggyback on the authority of the uh, Amazon domain that way. Um, and so single, and guys, it's so simple to throw up a single HTML page. Um, I mean, it's just dumb simple. You can download free HTML templates all day long. Throw them in. You don't even need an HTML editor, guys. You can use Notepad++. That's what I do. Um, and you can just edit the HTML right inside Notepad++. You can add schema. You can even find um, HTML templates that have structured, you know, schema already included so that you just go in and edit the details. And so they're really, really powerful. It's free lunch. Embeds. You can add anything you want. Yep. It's limitless, honestly. Yep. Brian says, anyone have trouble with JBZoo? Don't know, Brian. I haven't been in JBZoo in quite some time. Um, I don't handle that end of things, and I don't purchase products very much anymore. I finally got away from my uh, addiction to buying internet marketing products, and I'm trying to stay the hell away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting a hell of a lot more accomplished now that I stop buying shitty products all the time that end up collecting digital dust. So, they should so create a rehab for that sickness, man. I know. <laughs> If we if we did, we'd probably like we could probably close semantic mastery down and just live off the revenue from uh, providing support, <laughs> you know, for people that are addicted to buying uh, those IM products. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I know it's a it's a common problem in this industry, shiny object syndrome. Yeah, I, I was there when I first got started. I mean, yeah. most people were, you know. Well, what is this? Get, just got started, shit. I just gave it up a few months ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been buying. I'm not kidding. I'm habitually buying products for uh, for years, man, and I don't even use most of them. So I just finally gave it up. Anyways, <clears throat> Brian's up. What's up, Brian? It's been a long time, man. He says, "Can anyone recommend a free or paid plugin that can curate content automatically? If anybody has any ideas, please share them. I don't do any automated curation stuff unless it's like way, way out, like two or three steps out. Um, and even then, we stop doing it. We just don't need to anymore. Uh, all the curating stuff that we do is done manually by my virtual assistants that have been trained." because it's so much higher quality and it's very inexpensive. But if anybody has any automated solutions, please speak up. Um, well, I think that the main point, if, if you're trying to automate it, you're missing the point of curation, right? Because curation is to craft high quality, unique content without needing to write articles from scratch. So if you want to automate the, the, the thing, uh, I don't know actually like you can use curation suite maybe but that doesn't automate it like it, it helps you out with with the stuff but I don't know why why you would want to automate it uh, if you want to do automated content that's another story that's fun stuff that uh, I agree it needs to be far away from your website unless you're using a parasite or or G site would right the game but uh, in yeah. any case if you're doing anything worth of, of reading or that can convert a visitor into a purchase then manually is the way to go yeah, because Brian, I, you know, we have um, the curation course. Um, it's under the Master PR brand now. It's called uh, Content Kingpin. Content Kingpin yeah. But that that course is the exact, I mean, that's the exact process that I my team has been using since, oh, shit, I'd say, well, probably about four years now, four or five years. It's the process I started on my own, and I used to do all that shit myself. And then I finally got smart and learned to train virtual assistants to do it for me. And now that's, that is my, I've, I've mentioned this before, but the primary work that my local marketing agency does once I get the client ranked is just content marketing and that's it because once I get them ranked the syndication networks and the constant uh, content marketing which is all curated content manages to keep them for the most part ranked without me having to do anything else period and so I've got clients that have been paying me for years that I've had them ranked and I don't do anything but pay my curators um, and that's it you know, I, I do the reporting and then occasionally I have to do some additional citations and stuff like that. But it's, it's, it's primarily just content marketing and curated content. It's all handled by my virtual assistants. So that's a very, very profitable business. It's almost, almost hands off. That's why Content Kingpin's tagline is hands-free content marketing, right? 
All right, we're almost out of time. We've got a couple of questions here. We're going to have to get, uh, let's see, how to make a fortune selling a schmuck and a pancake. <laughs> Fucking love that, Wayne. That's awesome, man. Uh, we're going to answer Adam's question. He says, hello, my name is Adam. Please tell me how much I can index and bed YouTube per one day safely. Five, ten, 100,000, no penalty, google.com. Thanks, Bradley and Marco. Um, Adam, I would say if you're, if I'm reading your question right, and I, I had a question about this earlier uh, when I read it the first time. Um, if you're just trying to index YouTube videos, as far as I know, there's no limit. As far as I know, there's no limit to indexing pages on a website either. Um, I've never experienced a penalty from indexing unless it was a really, really spammy site or page that I was trying to index and it may get indexed and then fall out and cause the rest of the site to get slapped. But, um, you know, if like with, when it comes to just publishing posts or pages with you, uh, YouTube embeds, I know for a fact that I've never had, as long as you're not importing the video descriptions, which can be quite spammy, but you're just like republishing videos, I've never had a site, a single site de-index where, I mean, even some of the, back in the, a uh, couple of years ago when I was doing some stuff with Network Empire and they had uh, the pin vid uh, thing and it was like literally it would hook, connect to the API and it would publish YouTube videos to WordPress sites at the rate of you know 10,000 videos per day. I'm not kidding. You'd have to get special servers to manage the databases because of how much posts, how many posts would be published. The databases would grow so damn fast. And uh, and those sites would just, I mean, we 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 would test like thousands of videos per day and it went, and none of those sites got de-indexed. It was only when we started importing the descriptions that things started getting de uh, de-indexed. Anybody have a comment on that? Okay. Yeah, I have something. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Marco. Go ahead. No, we, we've, we've shown this before. We've tested this before because we have our own video embed network, right? Video powerhouse. And we embed videos constantly, and we've never had a problem. Uh, you know, as far as indexing, I mean, go to town. You're a Google publisher. Once you start embedding videos, you're, you're treated more like a, a, a Google or a YouTube publisher than you are, you know, anything else. So by all means, I've never seen anyone... As, if it's just a video, right? No description on it. If you're just embedding videos and pushing them through, uh, I don't see any problems, and I don't see any problems with, with uh, getting them indexed. Unless you're in the millions, I guess they would know it's a machine doing it. Then, right? Yeah, I think the API has well. I uh, for what I was talking about, the API. Um, I think it has a limit of fifty thousand per day. But anyways, that's that's uh, that's a different issue altogether. What were you gonna say, Angel? Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna give a quick tip uh, for the video indexing. Like something that I would do is I would set up a uh, a video XML on my website where it would host all of the videos that you're looking to index, and then I would submit that via Google Webmaster Tools. Sure. Yeah. And get that crawled. So you're just gonna increase the rate of Google crawling those videos and getting them indexed. So you said video uh, XML. Just to clarify that for him, you mean a video sitemap? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you could just download a plugin on WordPress. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just fire that up inside Webmaster Tools. Yep. Yep. I agree with that. Now, I know we're out of time, guys, but um, I've got to answer this question uh, for both of these guys. Uh, and, and Mark, thank you for that. I search from .com is the same thing. I have never, uh, I've never used that. I always just use the AdWords uh, tool, but that's cool. Thank you. Um, MetroBiz. This is our YouTube account provider, guys, and uh, Gmail account provider. He's a good guy. Uh, we had some issues in the past, and he squared all that stuff away. Uh, his bulkpva.com is his web address. If you guys need phone verified accounts, I highly recommend him. So go check it out. He's a good dude. He'll take care of you. If there's any issues, he takes care of them. So again, bulkpva.com. So because you're here, I'm going to answer your question. He says, one of my clients had a site created using HTML with six pages. I suggest him to create blog using WordPress. For example, he had site on the name site.com and HTML, and I said to make a blog on WordPress called blog.site.com. So for this feed URL, can we do IFTTT syndication network branded? Yes, absolutely. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I do when a client has an HTML site, which is kind of rare now, um, but it's, it's, they're still out there, right? Um, but that's always what I do is I tell them, look, we're just going to put a blog on a subdomain and we'll use that as the content distribution engine. And then you just use the blog's uh, subdomain RSS feed. That's absolutely correct. And what you can do is in the blog, you can, if like for example, if, if their HTML site's only got six pages, they're probably likely maybe a couple different product or service pages. So what you do is in the blog, you create categories to match those service pages. 
and then you would always post, you know, create your, you publish your posts within the correct categories. And what you do is put a 301 redirect URL from the category URL, which is like, you know, word, you know, site.com slash category slash whatever the slug is. You put a 301 redirect from the category URL up to the main money site HTML page. And that way all of the blog posts within that silo, essentially that category, that are going to have internal links. Well, their internal links are going to point up to the money site anyways, but they're going to be placed within that category. So the relevancy passes through that category URL, which is 301 redirected to the HTML page, the corresponding HTML page. And so you end up passing a lot of juice and relevancy up to the, the root domain that way while keeping all it simple in the, um, in the WordPress site. Anybody want to comment on that before I move on? Man, you're spot on. That was great advice. <laughs> that's all I got to say. That was good. Thanks. And it's, it's super easy to do, guys. That's where anytime I run into a site or like client sites that might not be WordPress uh, or, or they might not be HTML, but they're not WordPress. Um, and I, I always tell them, look, I'm not doing anything on your site because I'm not learning a new platform just for one client. So if you want me to do work for you, we're going to put a blog on a subdomain or in a subfolder, subdirectory type thing. And then that's how we work it. So that's exactly what we do. Good, good thoughts. Um, very good. Last question from Muhammad. Hey, Bradley, what's the best place to ask questions about Mindset Mondays? That's a good question, Muhammad. Uh, right now, I've had a few comments and stuff like that just coming through my channel because I'm hosting those videos on uh, my own channel. So it's youtube.com Brad slash Bradley Benner. However, um, I do have my own name as a domain. So bradleybenner.com. It's just a one-page site right now. It's like an online business card, basically. What I might do, Muhammad, because I'm going to continue that series as far as I know, indefinitely. <laughs> so what I'll probably do, Mohammed, is put a uh, like a, 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 um, a contact form or something on that page that at bradleybenner.com that people can ask questions for about that kind of stuff there and it'll come to me and that way it's all in one uniform. It, it'll be easy for people to find. And right now, if people ask questions on YouTube, first of all, I don't always reply to YouTube comments. And second of all, they're all comments on individual videos so it makes it difficult if I could put them all in one central location which I can solve that with just a simple web form um, and that's something I may do so in fact I'm gonna make a note of that now and that's just at bradleybenner.com and I'll put a call to action in the video description once I get that set up uh, so that I can you know just direct people in those videos if you got any questions or comments post them at bradleybenner.com that kind of thing okay so I appreciate you bringing that up because that's something I hadn't really thought of um, and that's something I should do for sure all right Okay, guys. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm sorry we went a couple minutes over for those of you that are on, but appreciate you being here. So, Bye, everyone. Take thanks. care, everyone. Thanks, Angel. Thanks, hey, Hank, for hanging out, Rob. And uh, Angel, we'll get with you about uh, your SEO product in the next few days. Okay? Sounds good. Looking All right, guys. forward to it, guys. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. See ya.